we're down to the finish line with our little guy here and the last thing we got to do is get him all sealed up with any of these pumpkins i don't really recommend keeping them out in direct rainy weather because if there's any crack or gap in your waterproofing water can seep in the nice thing is maybe it does what will happen is that area will get wet and saturated you find your little guy you find out he's a little soft and squishy in a spot you pull him out and you let him dry up and you recoat the area later on and he's usually fine so these guys are not hard to repair if water damage does get in there and now it's down to what do you seal them with well Ideally, this series is for your first pumpkin. So you seal them with whatever you can afford that's handy around. Some of the cheaper options are things like some of these uh, clear glaze sprays. Four or five bucks a can. If you're lucky, depending on the prices, you can give them a quick hit over with this and know that they're reasonably scratch proof. You can go with some polyurethane. You can go with some spar varnish. They're all equally good. Spar varnish in a few of these things will have a slightly uh, yellowing uh, effect on it, but that's really not too terribly important because these colors are primarily orange and yellow anyway. So if they're slightly deeper orange and yellow, you're really not going to notice. Nor will you notice if you hit them with a completely clear thing. The one thing to watch out for is the type of coat written on your product of choice, whatever it happens to be. If it's a gloss coat, that means this thing is going to come out ultra shiny and reflective. If it's a satin coat, it's gonna come out vaguely shiny. And if it is a matte, M-A-T-T-E, matte, matte coat, it's gonna come out fairly flat and not terribly shiny. Pumpkins themselves are somewhat shiny and it's your pumpkin. So have some fun and do whatever works for you. I today am just going to use a little bit of this uh, clear semi-gloss polyurethane because I've had it around for a while and I want to use it. So I'm not worried about the best product. I'm just worried about what worked for me. Take note to protect whatever surface you're using with your clear coat because obviously this stuff is going to want to weasel its way through newspaper alone if you're just using that to protect your table surface. The other advantage of using a coating, in addition to scratch resistance, is the fact that if you have your little buddy here all set out in a window, he's going to get blasted by UV rays from the sun. Over a long period of time, this can affect the paint and cause it to get kind of sun bleached. So a coating will also help keep their color. It's not uncommon to get drips coming down at this stage. So just be wary if you're applying a lot of coating to one spot, especially on the upper jaw of your pumpkin, it may very well tend to drip down. If your stem isn't really solid, don't be too comfortable about using it as a lever. It may not be as rigid as you think. So it might be safer to do the top and let it dry for a bit and then do the bottom. I'm just going to do the inside using the same cropped brush so I don't have to worry about getting that brush angle in there. And I'm going to urethane the inside. I'm not going to do it extremely, extremely nitpickily. Uh, I'm just going to try to coat, especially the back, and I'm going to try to make sure that any water that might get on him and drips down on the front is going to be caught underneath the rim of the mouth and just behind here. But getting the entirety of the inside can be a bit difficult. Just going to do the very best we can. Depending on where and what you set him down on, you might find that the bottom rim here experiences a little bit of mulching over time. It might get scratched on concrete or other surfaces. If you want to, you can glue a little bit of uh, loose fabric or you know, a little bit of wood or something on there to keep the bottom safe. Generally, 
if you are careful, they will not get scratched up too much over time. I've had a series of pumpkins getting dumped on my uh, concrete garage floor for years, and they're absolutely A-OK. -okay. But it is something to consider that if people do kind of carelessly scrape, then over time you'll get abrasion on the bottom, and that can lead to spots where water infiltration is possible. There we go. Five hours, 18 minutes, about 13 seconds. And we can turn this pile of newspaper, toilet paper, glue, flour, a little bit of joint compound, and some paint into a nice, cool Halloween pumpkin. There will be time extensions, because I've done this many times, and obviously that is just the working hands-on time. You will have a little bit of time added for mixing up your mache paste, smoothing paste, and paper clay, but in terms of actual hands-on time to make one, that's all it takes. So this little guy can be yours for a tiny time investment and a tiny materials investment. Very cheap, they beat out those one, ugh, those rancid funkins and foam pumpkins on sale anytime because they're 100% yours, you made them with your own hand, and they look awesome. If you have any issues with how your pumpkin looks, maybe your streaks here are a little bit too dark at this point, all you need to do is just take some orange paint and go over them a few times. It'll dim them right up. If you find that any of the marks are entirely too light, then you can darken them by going over and re-dry brushing them. But any tiny little adjustments you've got can be done. But this is your final pumpkin-y product.